if you recall the uh, aromaticity criteria, uh, there are four of them. The molecule to be aromatic has to be cyclic, uh, it has to be uh, conjugated, it has to be planar or flat, and of course it should obey the Huckel rule, which is 4 and uh, plus 2. Let's, let's write these criteria again, and then we take examples and see we, how we can, we can apply them. So for any molecule to be aromatic, of course it should be, uh, uh, to start with, it should be cyclic. It has to be cyclic. Um, the uh, molecular shape should be planar or flat. And of course, as exemplified, as we've seen before, or illustrated by, by benzene, of course. Benzene is the simplest aromatic compound. Benzene, of course, is flat in shape, again, because all uh, carbons in the benzene ring are sb2 hybridized. The bond angles are 120. That's because the geometrical shape around each carbon atom is trigonal uh, planar. So that's the second um, requirement. The um, third requirement, if you recall, that the molecule has to be, or the ring has to be conjugated. Um, that's a result of um, uh, presence, if you like, of a p orbital on each um, uh, atom, uh, carbon, or another heteroatom, as we will see in, in, in coming or uh, upcoming examples. So conjugates it is the th third um, uh, criterion. The fourth uh, uh, criterion is the Huckel uh, rule, which is 4n plus 2. So 4n plus 2, remember, is the number of, of pi electrons. Remember, n has nothing to do with the number of pi electrons. So this is, remember, this is the Huckel rule, named after the great chemist um, 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 Huckel. So um, if n, if, you, uh, if, you, if we want to apply this uh, uh, formula, if n is 0, then 4n plus 2 would be 2. So 2 pi um, electrons. If n equal to uh, 1, then the 4n plus 2 would be 6 pi electrons. If n equal to uh, uh, 2 this time, if n equal to um, to two, so eight, eight, four n plus two would be um, would be would be ten pi electrons. So any any molecule, of course, provided that it has fulfilled all of the uh, three requirements, which is of course uh, the molecule has to be cyclic, flat, and conjugated. Any molecule with this number of pi electrons should be aromatic. So these these numbers, if you like entitles a molecule which has fulfilled all of these requirements to be, um, to be aromatic. Of course, you can continue. If n equal to 3, then 12 plus 2, that is 14, and so on. So if the number of high electrons is 2, 6, 10, or 14, and so on, then it is aromatic. Otherwise, it's not aromatic. So in other words, if the number of high electrons is, say, 4, for example, that's anti-aromatic. So 4 high electrons is not 4n plus 2, so 4 pi electrons is not uh, 4n plus 2, and therefore the molecule in this case, or whatever that case is, is anti-aromatic. Not only for any number, of course, between these aromatic numbers, if you like, or the 4n plus 2 number, so 8 also, um, um, uh, means that, or suggests that the, a molecule um, is, is also anti-aromatic. 12, for example, between 10 and 14, that's an anti-aromatic um, number, if you like, or a number that's obtained uh, not by applying, of course, the 4 and plus 2. So and even though the, a molecule has fulfilled three requirements, but it's not 4 and plus 2, or if the number of pi electrons is say four or eight or twelve, for example, then the molecule cannot be cannot be aromatic. What's coming up now uh, uh, in a while is uh, examples. We need to, uh, we take examples um, um, of cyclic compounds, if you like, in order to apply these criteria of aromaticity.